One Friday, when my son was young and had completed his first week at school, I asked him how he had found his week. He turned to me and said, that was good, what are we doing next week? I understood what lay behind the question because he had previously been used to me taking him to various places like the park or to music lessons, to painting sessions or attending parties or visiting friends. But that time had come to an end. His days were now to be filled predominantly with school. I answered his question by informing him that he would be going to school again next week and every day for at least the next 18 years. I'm sure that it was enough to send a shiver down his spine, but I'm happy to say that he survived. He has now completed his time at school and is ready for the next stage in his life. But how that time has flown, I remember it as if it were yesterday. The opening eight verses of the passage we read today has a poetic feel to it, as it tells us that there is a time for everything and everything in its time. It refers to life events that are on the opposite scales to each other, which we may experience in the moment as either good or bad, putting it simply. There is a sense that the whole gamut of life is to be found in these verses. Some of these events we may never experience. Some may be once, and yet others we may experience again and again. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to tear down and a time to heal. A time to keep and a time to throw away. And in the case of my son, a time for free and spontaneous activities and a time for the structure of school. On the 23rd of March of this year, as a country, we went into lockdown as the coronavirus swept the country and indeed the world. And this was a new and unusual phase for us all. We were having to live with the unknown as the streets became still and we remained in our homes. Many of us were having to adapt our lives to accommodate the new position that we found ourselves in and wondering if this was to become our new normal or if we would return to a time we once knew. This naturally triggered feelings of anxiety and panic, loneliness and depression and fear in many people. And for others, perhaps it was fun and enjoyable and new and just what they wanted and restful. I wonder how you found the lockdown period. Later, we saw that some of these countries that went into lockdown before us began to reopen and resume life as it was before. But it seemed that only a short time afterwards that these countries were going back into lockdown as numbers of people dying from the coronavirus started to increase again. We ourselves have begun to see that happen in localised areas of our country too. A time for lockdown to begin and a time for lockdown to cease. I believe that this will indeed be the case since everything has its own season, its own time for being. The author of the book of Ecclesiastes is believed to have been written by King Solomon, who was the 10th son of King David and the third king of Israel. He is also believed to be the author of the Song of Songs and the wise sayings in the book of Proverbs. He was reputed for his wisdom, for this was what he asked of God when he could have asked for anything. God was pleased that he hadn't asked for, to destroy his enemies or asked for something of a selfish, selfish nature, but instead he asked for wisdom that would serve him and others. He was a wealthy man with many wives, as was the custom of the day. And under his kingship, 
he arranged for a temple to God to be built. He was a man who was close to God at first, but then through his marriages to foreign women who followed foreign gods, Solomon lost his devotion for the Lord his God. At the point where we meet him in the book of Ecclesiastes, he is an old man reflecting back over his life and taking stock of it all. In chapters one and two, he considers that life is full of events that are of a cyclical nature, and that man is often in pursuit of one thing or another, as if he was in charge of his own destiny. Now, some of us will wake up every morning knowing roughly what the day will hold for us, a time to travel and a time for work, perhaps a bit of time with the family at the end of the day if we are lucky, and a time to sleep. This cycle of events is then repeated the next day and the day after that. And what for? To earn the money to pay the bills and to fund the lifestyle we seek. Is that all there is to it? Then there are some of us who wake up most mornings to a day where we don't know what will happen. We go through the days fulfilling things as they arise, but we have no clear direction of what we will do and when we will do it. One day can seemingly blend into another and a sense of time may be hard to mark. There may be days when we feel as if we are wasting time and other days when we feel we have been productive but only seemingly by chance. As Solomon surveys his life, he determines that everything is meaningless. All wisdom, all riches, all work is futile as it takes us nowhere. We still will die and all that we have acquired in life we will not take with us. We may have been careful in gathering the treasures in our life, only for it to be left in the hands of one who is careless with them after we leave this earth. He ponders what is the point of it all. We get a glimpse of the answer to this question in verses 9 to 11. Here we read that the Creator God has made everything beautiful and set it within its own divine time. He lies behind all life and places in our hearts the longing to know what lies ahead, yet he does not give us the satisfaction of knowing what is in the future. But we carry the hope of eternity and the hope that we can get, go through life facing whatever comes our way. Now you may say, but what about the situation we are going, if, if the situation we are going through is a difficult one and one where time seems to be never ending, as in the situation when we are mourning the death of a loved one or suffering from a long-term illness or when we are caring for someone with serious health concerns or waiting for a decision on our asylum application or when someone in your family is missing. How are we expected to manage life events such as these? Well, let me take you back to Solomon, who by the end of the book of Ecclesiastes concludes his reflections by realizing that nothing in life is of any value if it is not God-centered. The further we are from God, the closer we are to a life with little meaning, regardless of how good a life we may have lived or how good a person we may be. He discovers that God allows us to go through the changing cycles of life's events and he wants us to enjoy the good times and he wants to enable us to go through the more difficult times by sustaining us through the ministering of his grace to us. Faith has taught Solomon that God orders all things to his own purpose and he can be trusted to know what is good. 
he makes a decision to reconnect with God. And in re-establishing his relationship with God, he realigns his life back on track with God again. Now, interestingly enough, we read in 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 2 to 4, the words of King David, which was said to Solomon while his father was on his deathbed. He said, So be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him, and keep his decrees and, dec and commands his laws and his regulations, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you go, and that the Lord may keep his promise to me. If your descendants watch how they live, and if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. And so it was. God's promise to King David was fulfilled. So how can we draw closer to God? The Bible has a few things to say about this. In James chapter 4 verse 8, we read, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Our Lord God has given us free will to decide if we want him in our lives or not. And if we do, then he is ready to draw close to us. It's up to us and no one else. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So once we have made the decision to get close to God, then all we have to do is to ask Jesus through prayer to come into your life and to take control of every part of your life and he will be ready to enter your life. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You can make a prayer request directly to God. You do not have to go through anyone else. You will be starting a direct relationship between yourself and God and nobody need necessarily pray on your behalf unless you desire them to. The Bible has more to say on how to maintain your relationship with God and how you can be supported to grow your faith. Things like making time to read the Bible, attending church and smaller church groups where you can get to know people better and vice versa and together learn about God and how to live a godly life. I wonder where you are in your faith today and if you are ready for a change. Are you someone who is ready to have an encounter with God? We have just finished a series on encounters with God and I wonder if you've heard any of them. Do you want to trust in him with your life and, your, and experience the good gifts he has for you? If so, you will find a prayer at the end of this message that you can say or modify if you want um, and then say, wherever you are, to, the, to begin your journey and then please stay in touch with the church and listen to our services so that we can continue to support you as you begin this wonderful journey. If this is not you, are you someone who, like Solomon, was once close to God but over the years has drifted from him? Are you ready to return to God and, like Solomon, re-establish your relationship with him again? If so, why not start that relationship again today by relying, relying on God for all situations in your life from now on? Please don't let the time pass you by. Now 
it's a season for change. God bless you all.